The movies of Jackie Chan, before he was famous. Jackie's early early years well, maybe famous isn't the right word, but before he was an A-lister in Hong Kong, Jackie Chan was the number one stunts guy in kung fu films. Jackie has an extensive number of films under his belt, so why not explore the earlier works? Jackie played a fair few small roles and did a lot of stunts in movies before taking the lead in some of the films listed further down. He had a minuscule part in Come Drink With Me at the age of 16 and even the highly regarded A Touch of Zen, among other films, before doing stunts in Bruce Lee's films Fist of Fury and Enter the Dragon. Jackie is a big Bruce Lee fan and did a lot of uncredited work in films during those years of his fame, in movies like Hapkido, including one lead role in Little Tiger of Canton, see below. But it was after the death of Bruce Lee that Jackie was being given the opportunity to take on bigger roles. Although it was mainly because the big wigs wanted him to become the next Bruce Lee, they put him in films like The New Fist of Fury, a sequel to the original Bruce Lee's film. Jackie badly wanted to be number one, but was told he couldn't hold a lead, especially considering his eyes were described as too thin, so he even got eye surgery to improve their appearance. Of course he eventually broke through into the kung fu comedy scene with Snake in the Eagle's Shadow and Drunken Master and became the legendary actor everyone knows today. But the films before are like his stumbling blocks to stardom, so I thought I'd check them out. Here are some of those early and most notable films and what to expect from them. Little Tiger of Canton Also known as Master with Cracked Fingers, which contains added footage. Little Tiger of Canton is a film shot in 1971 but released in 1973. It was the first film shot with Jackie Chan as the lead at the tender age of 17. Jackie plays a young teenager who constantly gets into fights and wins due to his martial arts skill. His uncle, who is his guardian, is furious over all the fights he gets into and constantly punishes him for it. But things with the local gang keep getting worse and he is forced to fight before things go too far. The movie starts with Jackie showing off his moves, some awesome and impressive acrobatic stuff. His fights are a little sloppy, but energetic and acrobatic, showing off his tremendous fitness and ability. Despite Jackie Chan's presence in this movie, it is pretty cheap and nasty. The quality of the version I saw was really bad. But if you're curious to see Jackie as a kid doing his thing, this movie may be worth watching. Fist of Anger Also known as An Eagle's Shadow Fist Jackie isn't in the lead in this film, but plays more of a sidekick-slash-supporting role to another character in the lead. The film is set during the Japanese occupation of China during World War II. Jackie Chan's character is a member of a group of rebels who decide to try and fight back to drive the Japanese out of their town. It's pretty bland sort of film, but has a little bit of action. Jackie's character even gets killed toward the end of the film. Not exactly must-see material so I'd skim past this one unless you are really completist. Rumble in Hong Kong Also known as Policewoman Jackie plays the smaller role, with some weird facial hair, next to a policewoman in this film, a movie which was a major box office flop. It's another reasonably cheap and boring movie, but does show us a very young-looking Jackie Chan, he looks like he's only 15. Though he is older, in a truly uneventful piece of film. There are a fair few fights, but the focus isn't on Jackie, and they're pretty standard and unexciting. Don't fall for this one, it's pretty ordinary. Jackie himself has said that the only good thing to come from this film is was his off-screen friendship with Chun Chung Lam. New Fist of Fury Yep, the sequel to Bruce Lee's top film, Fist of Fury, starring our man Jackie. Jackie plays Ah Lung, aka Dragon, in this film, a young troublemaker who gets bullied and beaten up in Taiwan. He has an encounter with some of the original students from Chinjin School and is eventually taught martial arts to fight back against some oppressive Japanese bad guys. This movie is an early work and didn't do too well, but it's not half bad to watch, it's just not fantastic. The action is somewhat halfway between the old-fashioned wavy-styled martial arts-style fights to the technical high-intensity fighting Bruce Lee brought to cinema. This film is very on the fence as it's not bad but not great in most aspects. 
I thought it was worth checking out for some early Chan though. Shell and Wooden Men This film has a different role for Jackie, he plays a mute Shell and trainee whose parents were murdered some ten years before. He cops a bit of crap from those around him but eventually meets a prisoner who teaches him kung fu whilst he also studies under a monk. Eventually, Chan's character the dumb boy, as they all call him, takes on the shell and wooden men, which a test which involves fighting her through a hall whilst a bunch of wooden dummies swing strikes and make the whole experience quite painful and difficult. This film has a very standard feel, but it does have a few nice unique aspects to it. Jackie makes for a believable mute and you can't help but feel for his character. He is ultimately driven by revenge and of course certain twists reveal his father's killer. Naturally, he must use his kung fu to defeat him. Most of the action is pretty basic, wild swinging movements and outdated techniques mixed with Jackie's acrobatic movements, dull in comparison to his later films, make up most of the action. The final fight, however, isn't too bad and worth the watch. It's not one of Jackie's best, but if you're a Chan fan, check it out. Don't forget to keep an eye out for Yun Yuan Biao.